Good evening and welcome everyone to our meeting. It's 6 o'clock, Wednesday, September 14th, 2022. Roll call, please. Roberto Zamora, present. Mary Hernandez, present. JJ Luna, present. Alda Benavides, present. Dr. Sainz, I do declare a quorum. Thank you, Dr. Benavides. Can everyone please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Do we have anyone for public comments? Yes, we have a public comment from Brenda Salinas. Good evening, Good Madam evening. President. Additional time, please. Oh. Thank you. Once again, good evening, Madam President, school board members, central administrators, and members of the community. First, let me start with a shout out to all the night shift custodians who clean and disinfect our campuses. Unfortunately, where the goal is to provide a safe and clean environment for our students and employees of the district, they are working in an unsafe environment due to the district shutting down the AC at 3 p.m. to save money. Since we are here tonight using this public school building with us AC on, how about we shut down the cooling system in this building too? Let's be fair. La Jolla ISD needs to take new steps to ensure our custodians go home safe and at the end of their work day to avoid any health injuries and promote a positive and healthy working environment for our hard working custodians. They do not need to hear. They are replaceable if they're doing their job. Also, a shout out to all the pre-K 3-4 teachers, especially the teachers with a large class size of 25 plus students. The multi-age enrollment has been increasing and our pre-K teachers need a healthy working environment and our students need a healthy learning environment. Teachers' responsibilities and duties are to maintain a classroom environment conducive to learning, maintain classroom behavior, and take all the necessary precautions to protect our students, plus all the tasks assigned. Now, this is to the school board tr trustees and also the administrators. If you think you can maintain a classroom environment conducive to learning and maintain classroom behavior with 25 little ones with different needs, maybe you should take some time from your schedule to take over the classroom from one day and show the pre-K teachers how it's done. Now during your discussion on this item 8.1 regarding the pre-K 3-4 program, we would like to hear how you will help our pre-K teachers who need support and take immediate action. The multi-age classroom should be at an 18 to 2 ratio with an instructional assistant. Now regarding the agenda, item C.3, business and finance, approval of Hope and West Academy relocation plan to the Lincoln Building and the Jimmy Carter Building, did the district reach out to the parents and teachers asking them for their input? We know and I've heard that if these relocations in the past did not work, find another solution with a detailed plan that includes safety measures and daily operations before you approve this item. Our district is blessed that our members and La Jolla school employees selected La Jolla ISD as their employer. If our members and school employees are not treated with respect, do not expect them to return next year. And if La Jolla ISD members are not treated res 
with respect than expect us. Thank you and have a great evening and enjoy your friendly and cool temperature. Thank you, Mrs. Salinas. We will continue with the approval of the tax collector's report. Do I have a motion? Mm -hmm. Motion has been made by uh, Mr. J.J. Luna on approval of the July 2022 tax collector's report. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Dr. Zamora seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, approval of minutes, approval of work session for August 24th, 2022, and approval of special call meeting for August 31st, 2022. So moved. Motion has been made by Ms. Hernandez. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Is that for both items, Ms. Hernandez? Yes. Thank you. Second by Mr. Luna. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item on the agenda is superintendent's report, and we'll start with the enrollment report found on page 22. Dr. Sainz. Thank you, Dr. Benavides. Good evening, everyone. The enrollment report is dated September 7, 2022. On this date, we had 11,506 elementary students, 13,101 secondary students, for a total of 24,607 students, which is 2,092 students more than on this date last year. Are there any questions on the enrollment report? I have one question. On Flores Elementary, does that include the virtual, um, the students enrolled in the virtual academy? For the record, uh, Dr. Cantu joined us at 6.07. Those students are included with their home campus, Dr. Benavides. So they're not? So they're not. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I have some comments. And yes. Comments. So just to comment on uh, the enrollment in the pre-K, pre-3 and pre-K, that enrollment has gone up in pre, the pre-K3 mm -hmm. from 368 to 903 students from last year to this year. That has placed, I think, quite a strain on classrooms and teachers. So how are we doing with uh, pupil-teacher ratios now? In that might be, um, Ms. Ayala, yeah. if you could please respond. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, the Office of Human Resources is currently looking at all of the classrooms to determine how many of our current classrooms are over the 22 to 1 ratio. I do not have a, a number at this time to tell you how many of our pre-K classrooms are over the 22 to one, but we do have some classrooms throughout the district that are over that ratio at this time. The um, difficulty that we are encountering at this time is finding appropriately certified teachers to fill vacancies. If we were to say, uh, if there's a classroom that has, for example, 25 students, we could easily say, we're gonna go ahead and open up another classroom, however, those students would be without a certified teacher. And our goal is to make sure that each of our students are served by a highly qualified teacher. Now in pre-K three, pre -K three uh, for the Correct. three year olds, we have a lower people teacher ratio than 22. Correct, our goal at the district is to be at an 18 to two. Okay. But the state allows us to be at a 22 to one. So then again, here just to make the point from last year's pre-3 to this year's pre-K four, We've gone from 368 students to 1,319. Correct. That again places that, for planning purposes, you know, and, and hiring the teachers that are needed, that uh, is a challenge. For planning purposes, <coughs> we were predicting a decline in enrollment. We are very happy to see the opposite happening, an increase in enrollment, but that is putting a strain on the teachers because we do have, again, classrooms that are over the 22 to 1 ratio. And the emphasis that we have right now in human resources is making sure that we find highly qualified teachers for each of our classrooms. Where have you um, uh, publicized the vacancies for certified PK3 teachers? <coughs> 
We did do publications prior to the beginning of the school year in different social media outlets and also uh, in the newspaper. Right now, we're currently only advertising on our district website. Perhaps maybe uh, some ads in the local papers and, and universities. Uh, maybe someone knows of someone that's certified that doesn't have a job. Absolutely, we do have good communication with our local universities as well as some of the teacher certification programs that are available in our region. We are in constant communication with them and they are sending us applicants and we send those applicants out to our campuses as well. Thank so, you. Follow up to the lower grades now going to the high schools. So we, have, we have good enrollment and good increases as we move through the grades. When, and that's across the board. Now, when I look at, at it by cohort and looking at ninth, last year's ninth graders moving to the 10th grade, 10th graders moving to the 11th grade, what I see is that if from ninth grade to, to 10th grade, we have right now minus 139 students, and then minus 47 at the 11th grade and minus 120 at the senior level. What are we doing to uh, find those students or to ensure that the graduation rates do not decline? Yes, absolutely, uh, Dr. Samora. That's a really good question. And we actually, we started since day one. Since day one, uh, we had all of central office uh, folks working collaboratively with our campuses. That way we could go ahead and contact those parents of those kids that did not enroll on the first week of school. We did make over 10,000 calls on that day. Um, and do know that we have identified uh, 954 students from eighth all the way to 12th grade that uh, were not in school, that needed to be in school. And due to the efforts, collective efforts that we've done up to now, we've been able to bring back up to 525, which we've decreased that number to 420 students that we're still pending to bring back. Uh, a little bit closer to 500, I'm giving you estimates at this point in time. And we do have several initiatives that we've done and are continuing to do. For example, we had a, a phonathon, and in that phonathon, we contacted over 415 parents of those students to that way we could get them back in. We have another phonathon that's scheduled on the 22nd of September. And we're, next week, we're starting an initiative uh, where we're going to be working. We have a group of individuals that have been identified, such as our social workers and student services uh, personnel. They're going to be working in the evenings to uh, make phone calls and do home visits during the week to try to get those additional 450-something students that we're still lacking to bring in. Now, um, another thing that we are also going to be doing is we've scheduled um, truancy, I want to pronounce this correctly, it's a district truancy mediation committee that that is something new to our district. We started that uh, later, um, last year, like around in April, and we are starting those meetings next week with, for those parents that have, they have failed to enroll their students. And it's going to be composed of some of these families that we've identified, some of these students that we've identified. So those are some of the efforts. We have a plan that we've been, that we're following to try to get those kids back in to school. And it's, it's looking very promising. We also did the community walks. I don't know if you talked about that, Dr. Villarreal. Uh, that's true. We've held two community walks already, and uh, we've visited 111 students. Out of those 111 students, we've brought back 55. So will those initiatives continue to find the students that are still not back? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, we're, we're with those initiatives. We're gonna we're focusing on those students that are haven't enrolled yet. So do we have teacher shortage areas, specific content areas where we may have shortages, and what are we doing to recruit in those areas? For teachers? Yes. At the secondary level, we are encountering uh, a need to find 
ELA teachers, because our ELA teachers also have to have an ESL certification at the secondary level. We are um, needing math teachers, science teachers, and in the area of special ed. And again, the same thing, we are advertising these vacancies in our district website, but we will be looking at other avenues where we can advertise the vacancies that we have to let individuals know that we are looking to hire. Okay. Any other questions? The, the, the next one is related to finance, but with attendance. With attendance, well, go yeah, ahead. Because I know that we're looking for increasing enrollment just a question on, of the great levels that we have, which ones are now, are we getting funded just half day ADA? Good evening, uh, right now it's a PK3 program. We're getting paid at uh, half the, the basic lot. What about for the four year olds? The four, go ahead. It is PK3 and PK4. So it's the, so when we look at the enrollment then for pre-K three and pre-K four, we can divide that by two when we look at funding. Yes. That is correct. Okay, and the other question, sir, has to do, and I don't know who, maybe Mr. Munoz, what's the percentage of migrants now in our district? Because the percentage of migrants, as you know, can impact our enrollment, not our enrollment, but our ADA and in terms of how that's calculated. In regards to enrollment, Dr. Samoy, I think the last report that we got from my migrant director was that they were close to the 5%. Um, that in itself would have some, uh, I guess, uh, connections to the entitlements. Uh, but at this point in time, that's, what, uh, that's where we are. Right? For the we're current here. year, Mr. Munoz? Yes, ma'am. So will you just explain for, for us, like, why is that important, the 5% threshold? Right. It's, it's tied to the entitlement, Dr. Samoy, in regards to what percentage of... Uh, uh, reimbursements we would get for the district and the implications that would they would have uh, to district-wide services. Okay, so basically what we are getting for ADA purposes is that we can calculate our ADA on the best four, six weeks if we exceed the 5%. For a migrant population, yes, sir. If we do not exceed that 5%, then it could also affect our overall ADA and funding. It would ADA have repercussions for funding. ADA and entitlements, correct. So we should also be out there looking to make sure that anybody that's a migrant that we identify them appropriately. We currently employ five migrant recruiters that are actively uh, out there <coughs> recruiting, uh, making sure that our kids that are coming in and are enrolling in the district uh, do complete those uh, migrant surveys to make sure that they get identified and uh, that they get the services that they need to make sure that we close those learning gaps. So that 5% number increases as the total number enrollment increases. Remember that, that is correct, right. Okay. And, and the opposite is true, right? Because it's a fewer enrollment, uh, one do, and once the, their scaling right will get skewed based on their the enrollment as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, and I just want to add that we're lacking around 242 students, migrant students, to enroll into the district. So we are still pending those students. Good. Thank you. The only thing that I did notice that the only school that had uh, a drop besides one of the middle schools was the Academy of Health Science. I'm just curious. Um, because I know that's a, an area that kids are very interested in. So I don't know what happened in, in terms of the recruitment or they just, because I know we had a lot, we had 56 less students enrolled at the Academy of Health Science. So I'm just curious. I'm not sure if I remember correctly, but I believe it's a, a negative 55 or 56. Around, around, 56. 56. 56. So um, it's, it's the recruitment. It's the recruitment. Uh, I think we need to go ahead and focus uh, on that a little bit more. And some students have decided to go back to the comprehensive high schools. Thank you. <clears throat> Are there any other questions on the enrollment report? We can then go on to recognition of La Jolla ISD Technology Department in recognition of National IT Professionals Day. Good afternoon, Madam President, Dr. Benavides, Madam Superintendent, Dr. Science, ladies and gentlemen of the board and our community. Uh, this evening as part of the National IT Professionals Day uh, that's going to be celebrated nationwide on the third Tuesday of the month of September. I think this year it's going to be September 20th. Uh, well, administration would like to recognize our technology department for all that they do to ensure 
uh, that our staff has the instructional technology and the resources they need to provide educational excellence. So, Can uh, I have uh, Dr. Benavides and Ms. Hernandez please step forward to recognize our IT staff. Thank you, Dr. Sainz, uh, Dr. Benavides, uh, Ms. Hernandez. So uh, we would like to first recognize our Technology Instructional Resources Director, Ms. Clem, Clem Garza. Our Cybersecurity Coordinator, Mr. Fernando Mercado. Our Technology Integration Coach, Ms. Ana Perez. Our District Technology Integration Strategist, Mr. Roberto Hernandez. We also have our Network Administrative Specialist. These are the, the techs, for the techs. Uh, so we would like to recognize Mr. Oscar Gonzalez. <laughs> Mr. Jose Tanguma. <laughs> Mr. Onesimo Trevino. and Mr. Uh, Gerardo Garcia, Jerry Garcia. We also have some of the area's greatest uh, network technicians, so we would like to recognize some of them. Uh, so first of all, we have Mr. Joel Science. And Mr. Hugo Chavez. And the lady that, uh, that keeps all of them working together, uh, our secretary, uh, Ms. Diana Torres. So again, uh, we would like to thank uh, our IT staff for keeping us connected. Uh, thank you, Board of Trustees. Thank you, Dr. Science, for allowing us this time to recognize them. Thank you. Congratulations, everyone, and thank you for your amazing work. That concludes the superintendent's report. Thank you, Dr. Science, and thank you to all the technology department for all that you do for our students and our staff. We'll continue with our discussion items. The first uh, discussion item is discussion of curriculum, student daily schedules, and teacher supports for the La Jolla ISD PK3 and PK4 programs. Good evening, Madam President, Dr. Benavides. Madam Superintendent, Dr. Sainz, ladies and gentlemen of the board and members of the community. My name is Marta Castillo and I'm the Executive Director for Elementary Education. Today I am here to present on the curriculum, daily schedules, and teacher supports for the pre-K program. I will be referencing the PowerPoint that was provided to you and will also display on the screen. On the first slide, you will see some of the components and details of the pre-K-3 program. It contains a rigorous curriculum that is aligned to the early childhood outcomes and to the pre-K guidelines. It was prepared by a team of pre-K-3 and pre-K-4 teachers and by our district content area coordinators. It follows the district dual language time allotments. It's supported with professional development and it also includes a family engagement component. On the next slide, you will see the curriculum development team, and it shows the teachers, the experienced pre-K-3 and pre-K-4 teachers that were involved in the development of this curriculum.
On the next slide, you, you have the curriculum components by subject. For the reading and the language arts, you will notice that it is a, it is, it is a coordination between Three Cheers and Frog Street. And these components for reading language arts include the morning message, story time, literacy circle, writing penmanship, and then the small group instruction. During this time, this is the time that the teacher has the opportunity to work in a small group with the students based on their need. And we recommend that they use the circle activities collection. You also have the breakdown for math, for science and social studies, and in the other, we have the oral language development, the learn and play, which is a component that teachers and uh, coaches can use for outdoor uh, time. And then down here, you see the Ready Rosary, which is a family engagement component. This has videos on the skills that are taught weekly so that the parents can help the students at, at home. And it's available in English and Spanish. On the next slide, you see the schedules. We have the DLE schedule on the right side, on the left side, and on the right side, we have the monolingual schedule. Excuse me, schedule. Uh, Ms. Castillo, uh, yes. let me just reference the board to page 34, because the screen might not be as clear, and so it's on page 34 also. Okay. So we have the dual language uh, breakdown, and on the dual language schedule, you, you can see that you, we have the language of the day, and that's 150 minutes. Then we have the Spanish block, which is 210 minutes, and the English block, which is 90 minutes, and that's the math time down here, which is coded in blue. These schedules were developed with a collaboration of different departments in elementary education. Um, and the, science, the, the rest and snack time is incorporated into the science social studies block for our pre-K three students. And the monolingual schedule has the same components as our DLE schedule. On the next slide, um, you will see the supports that have been provided to teachers. Um, teachers have gone through the phonological awareness make and take session, and that one has, was provided by the Children's Learning Institute, um, as well as curriculum updates that were provided by our curriculum coordinators. We are working with teachers during uh, office hours, planning sessions, and campus support visits. Upcoming training will include another make and take, two-day circle training because we've had an increase in our pre-K uh, teachers, so we need to make sure that they're all trained in this, in this uh, two-day circle training. Writing, developmentally uh, writing practices, and the early childhood share fair where we, we want teachers to share ideas with each other. The, the next slide was not included in your, in your presentation, but we provided a copy in a blue um, manila folder. On this slide, you will see the assessment this, that is administered to our pre-K-3 and our pre-K-4 students, which is the circle assessment. On the screen, you will see the measures that are administered for reading and for math. And you also have the testing windows down here at the bottom for BOI, MOI, and EOI. And the goal for our students, which is 90% to be on track on those measures. The data displays the benchmarks for each measure according to the time of the year and the age of the child. So, so three-year-olds have different cut scores from our four-year-olds. And of course, the teachers use this information for planning, um, for small group, and as, also for whole group uh, planning. Um, so is there any questions about um, any of the slides or any of the information that we provided today with regards to the pre-K uh, curriculum? On the, on the assessments, um, mm -hmm. correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think we've uh, uh, reviewed how our uh, three and four year olds did last year, right? We've reviewed how pre-K four 
um, has done because that's part of the HB3 presentation, but we, I, we, that did not include pre-K3. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, just because we have such great enrollment, and I think that if we really zero in on our three and four year olds, they'll get started on the right track. And if they get started on the right track, we won't have that much catching up to do. So I think that we can use the data from the end of the year to see what our strong points were and to help our, our, our teachers, those that um, did well, perhaps highlight them, and then also um, help our new teachers that are, uh, you know, maybe teaching pre-K three for the first time or pre-K four. I know it's a big challenge to teach those little, little yes, it, little it, ones. It, it has been. It, it, it's, it is challenging, it especially is challenging. when it's a pre-K three and pre-K four combined classroom. But the teachers have we've been out there at the campuses, and the teachers have been really great um, in those classrooms. So yes, you know, our, we we really should highlight those teachers because it is it is a it's, it is a big job for them. So we will bring a report on the end of the year um, mm -hmm. assessment measures for pre-K three students, Dr. Yes. Benavides. Okay. Yes, we will. Okay. But that, going back to the urgency of having these mixed classrooms have their looking for those teachers and putting it out there for our community because it is critical years for these three-year-olds and it's, you know, I don't think it's developmentally appropriate for them in some of these big classrooms. I know. The state allows 22 to 1, but that's impossible when you're trying to build that strong foundation, especially with our three-year-olds. Do you know how many classrooms we still have mixed with mixed three and fours? No, I don't. No, we, we have many classrooms that are mixed three or four-year-olds because that is the, the design and that's how the schedules are. Uh, however, they do have an instructional assistant in the classroom also. I'm, I'm personally speaking for myself. When I've gotten, I've received many, many phone calls and it's from parents who are in those mixed classrooms, and it's not happy parents. You know, it's it's they have they're concerned that they're you know they're even four year olds, four year old parents, you know, or the parents of four year olds, excuse me, because they you know they feel they're not content with with um, I guess the way the classroom is structured, or maybe because. Um, they're mixed, and I know we were told that the possibility exists that if the numbers are there, we would divide them, right? If there was yes. four and three, mm -hmm. so um, I guess, you know, if we, to me there's an urgency in that. I don't, you know, having been around three-year-olds a lot, uh, their need is way, way much different than a four-year-old. Thank you, Dr. Cantu, and like Ms. Ayala explained, we continue to look for the certified teachers. However, as Ms. Ayala explained, we do not want to separate a class until we do have the certified teacher because I think parents would also prefer we have it with a teacher, but you're right that we do need to continue to work on our uh, student-teacher ratios until we get the, either the 18 to 1 or the 22 to 1. So we will continue to put out all efforts to continue to find uh, certified teachers. But thank you. Uh, your point is very well taken. Let, let me ask, uh, so we don't have classes that are just three-year-old and four-year-olds? Yes, they have some. We, we, have, we some. have some. We okay. have some. Yes, we do. Okay. Some being like 10 percent, 20 percent? I am not sure on how many, uh, how many classrooms are just three and just four. I do not have a number for you, Dr. Samora, but the number of standalone three-year-old classrooms are minimal because if, if we have enough three-year-olds to create a three-year-old classroom only, then that is what the campus does. There may be four or five. I don't know the correct number off the top of my head at this time, but the majority of the three-year-olds that come in to a, to a campus are minimal, so we do have, that is where we do create the three and four year old classroom. Another, yeah, another consideration because I mean we do have uh, in some cases many three year olds but we also look at the language and so because we also separate by language then sometimes that increases the number of let's say three year olds only that we can put in an English only classroom 
or three-year-old only that we can put in a dual language classroom by themselves. And so we also have to look at the dominant language when we separate kids. But that, they also do the regrouping during the uh, instruction? Do they do any regrouping or no? Do they do, I'm sorry, any what? Yes. Any regrouping. Oh, yes, 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 okay. yes, yes, yes. Yes, Absolutely. Okay. definitely. So for those classes that we have four-year-olds, do we have an assistant helping them or we don't? Yes. yes. If it's a mixed age classroom, there is assistance, okay. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. So in the mixed age classrooms, do they have the same instructional expectations? Yes, yes. So even the four, let's say the four-year-old went through the program last year as a three-year-old, do they come back then to do the same thing with the three-year-olds again? No. It's, it's, it's similar, but it's, they have the curriculum. The curriculum is a four-year-old curriculum and a three-year-old curriculum. But when they're together, what happens? They do, they do a common lesson, and then they bring the students into a small group with their curriculum for their grade level. Yes. So from your experience in observing, how does that work? Well, that is the way, and I, we did ask, right, in, uh, about Head Start and other, um, because we do have Head Start programs, and that's the way it's done, and it's a valid, model for educating our students because students learn from each other um, you know the, the four-year-olds become leaders uh, of those classrooms they teach each other so so it's and I, though I've seen it in the classroom right now it's 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 been difficult right for the teachers but the teachers who did it last year in the end, they, they were very positive about the outcomes at the end of the year. So well, There are certain outcomes that we have expect of three-year-olds, and then certain outcomes that we expect of four-year-olds. And I'm just asking that question to ensure that that mix is not going to keep the four-year-olds from progressing as they should. And no, that will not happen because so, so like you're saying, some of it is developmental, right? And those, those measures that are assessed have specific measures for the student's age. And some of those three-year-olds will probably achieve right. some of the measures like the four-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Yes, and so um, the, the students should progress well in a mixed-age classroom. And that's probably where the end of year results would be good mm -hmm. uh, to to um, identify the needs and the strengths and be able to help them. Because like any classroom, I mean, you get all levels of kids and you have to, uh, you know, meet their needs uh, in small groups. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do want to add, though, that from pre-K 3 to pre-K 4, from last year to this year, we did have the majority, I want to say all but six out of 500 and something, all but six pre-K students came into pre-K four. And so that's a, a tribute to our teachers that did an amazing job in teaching our pre-K threes with our pre-K fours. And almost all of our parents brought their kids back to pre-K four. So that's a good sign. And then we have a lot more that did not go to pre-K-3. Mm -hmm. Yes, that and that's why that we have the increase. Yeah. That we've got to catch them up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And those are the, the small group opportunities um, that the teachers have in the classroom. It says that the curriculum was prepared by PK-3 and PK-4 experienced teachers. When was this curriculum prepared? This summer. This summer? Yes, this summer. Mm -hmm. And then for the family engagement component, uh, will the teachers be responsible or will student services be responsible? Who's gonna help the teachers with the family engagement component? This, the one that's referenced here, it's, it's their videos. And so the teachers can share with the parents um, this, this specific component. And so the parents will have access at home. And we're helping them with this Ready rosy component from our department. That might be something for student services to consider because I know it's a lot for the teachers, but if you get a group of pre-K, PK-3 or PK-4 parents, 
that may be something that you can focus on so that they can offer additional support to the teachers. Okay. We'll do that. Any other questions? I'm just excited that we have all these three and four year olds, so we need to, uh, anything we need to do so that we can help you make it work. Um, yes. We're here to help you. Yes, I know, we're excited too to see. I was not expecting so many little ones, <laughs> like where they're all coming from. <laughs> it's a really good thing, but thank you everybody. Thank you for the support that you provide for CNI. Thank you. And thank you to all the members of CNI for all your work and student services uh, with our, with our PK3, PK4, and of course to human resources, find those teachers. Thank you, Ms. <laughs> Thank you. Next uh, discussion item is discussion of Hope and West Academy relocation plan to the Lincoln Building and the Jimmy Carter Building, respectively. Uh, good evening, Madam President, uh, members of the board, Dr. Sines. Uh, today I'm going to uh, go over the Hope Academy and West uh, Academy relocation plan. Uh, you all have it on your screen and you should have a, a little uh, binder there with small little uh, copies of the, of the presentation. Uh, page two, La Jolla ISD facilities plan. La Jolla ISD strives to provide our students a uh, learning environment where our students feel valued, safe, and inspired to participate in high-level learning. To fulfill this district goal, the facilities department conducts facility assessments every year. In 2020, we identified some campuses that needed significant upgrades. And these, uh, of these campuses were Hope and West Academy. Uh, with the upgrades, where Hope Academy would be 2.2 million, and the upgrades would be building facilities, uh, HVAC controls, and the canopies. So Hope Academy would be 2.2 million, West Academy would be 1.9 million, and together uh, a total of 4.133328 million. Uh, facility upgrade renovation plan, uh, we are recommending, administration is recommending that we relocate the campuses to other buildings that currently have spaces to house them. Uh, on to next slide five. School consolidation plan for Hope Academy would be to move Hope Academy to the Lincoln Building. Can the Lincoln Building accommodate additional students? The answer is yes. Lincoln Building's student capacity is 1,500 students. Uh, last uh, attendance taken, uh, excuse me, enrollment taken at, the, at these uh, campuses, Academy Hill Science, Currently enrolls 375 students, STEM 472 students, and with the addition of HOPE and currently at 35 students, a total combined uh, student population in this facility would be 882 students. The Lincoln Building has 20 rooms available in the F and T Hall, which is located on the northwest side of the building, and HOPE needs 11 rooms. Safety for our students and staff. How will we ensure student safety? Implementation of, of supports to ensure student safety are as follows. The Lincoln Building is in compliance with local and state safety guidelines. Uh, main entrance, before you even enter the facility, over here by the Jimmy Carter Building behind the Fine Arts Building on the west side is a main entrance which will be guarded and is guarded by a police officer stationed at the Coyote uh, Drive guardhouse. Um, and I believe most of you, if not all of you, are familiar with that guardhouse. So that's priority one. Two officers will be stationed at the Lincoln Building. One officer is already there with uh, Academy Health Science and STEM. And the second officer would be the Hope Academy officer. So there would be a total of two officers in the building and one officer guarding at the guardhouse. The Lincoln Building does have security fences and gates as well. And to further enhance the security of our students and staff, we would relocate current safety tools at the Hope Building. Uh, these current safety tools include the intercom, which will be linked and upgraded, metal detector, 
access control, which is the heavy magnet that keeps the doors from opening unless somebody in the inside allows them to open them, and any and extra security cameras uh, as needed at the Lincoln Building. Hope Academy relocation and timeline. In the month of August and September, members of the CNI department, our business and finance, operations, student services, and human resources have met with our campus administrators on this task. And upon board approval, we will meet with campus staff on Monday, September 19th. We will also begin preparing the receiving building, which is our Lincoln building, with supplies, some computers, not all, because some of the, the buildings are already have some supplies, and any other, any other needed supplies like materials, desks, uh, and anything else that the campus might need. Other things that will happen upon board approval will be the active, activation of the intercom system and install additional cameras, which we've already mentioned that we're not gonna buy no new cameras. All this will be cameras that are already at Hope. And then of course, some will be relocated from Hope. Our final move would be October the 13th. And if need be, Friday, that bad weather day, and Saturday as well, we will have our maintenance, custodial, and the transportation staff readily available to finish up and finalize any, any final needs that might be, uh, need to be addressed. Cost, uh, and all of this we have a budget for, and uh, this will not come out of the uh, general fund. It'll be, we planned and prepared for this. We met with campus administrations on, on some things that need to be addressed. Heating elements, the cost would be 20,000 and we would have to outsource for that. Cameras, the cameras we have in the district, but we need to outsource for, for the movement of some of these cameras. West entrance upgrade, that would be a, a small canopy, about an eight by 10 canopy, which we will do in-house. The, the cost is the materials. We have our welders right, and our, and our uh, maintenance crew to do the west entrance upgrade, and the intercom installation and movement uh, is, is at a cost of 7,500. And then there's some leaks that have been happening uh, for several years there at, uh, in the hallway, the main hallway in the, uh, in the fine arts hall. And uh, that would also be in-house work, uh, work. For a total of 64,000, we have, we have that budgeted for already. Um, on to the school consolidation plan for the West Academy. Before we move on, go ahead. Sure. Sorry, I just wanted to ask you something before you move on. So just for clarification, heating elements, what exactly do you mean? There? Okay, so the air condition, had the, it has a blower, right? The units <laughs> that we use, and the blower blows air. But in the summer, there's a cooling element, right? A coil that, that makes, uh, makes the uh, air cool. And then it also has a heating element. And there are several heating elements in that building that that have not worked for I would say at least two years. Uh, the cooling, the, the building cools beautifully. It's the heating elements that that would need to be replaced on some of those, in not in the T hall, more so in the uh, fine arts and the F hall. Okay, I didn't quite understand. And the west entrance upgrade. West. Okay, so the, if you if you if you've been to the building on the west side, there is no. Uh, in, in the, where we're gonna designate the student pick up and drop off area. There is no canopy for parents to drop their kids off and get through the door without getting uh, wet. So it would be a small in-house work. So, so then all these would just be, you've, uh, like the building's been assessed and these are upgrades that are needed to, to function the way we need it to function. We've used the building before without some of these, uh, without the canopy, the heating element was used the last year, uh, two years ago is the last time we used the building and uh, that's when we noticed that the heating element, so we weren't using it, so we decided not to invest in it, but now if we're gonna invest or we're gonna you know, put our kids in there, we might as well do it well and do it right. And uh, some of these came also at the campus administration asking us to consider this, because they're the ones that are gonna be there, their right. students are gonna be there. So that's Yeah, well, why. we need to make sure it's ready for them. And you said this isn't coming from the general fund? This is coming no, from we have, we have a, bu a budget for our maintenance and operations and we already, well, already met with them and told them that's where it's coming from. 
Don't you probably have it budgeted, but it is the general It's going to be budgeted. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because it, I mean. But it's in the budget you received already. already. Sure. Yes. Right. It's yes. already been done. During the okay. year, we have things that happen. Air conditioners bust. You know, so water heaters bust. Uh, sewer lines get clogged. So uh, it's coming from your allocation. And it's going to come from our operation yes. fund. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mr. Real, right now Thank the intercom system is connected to the front office. Correct. So will you be relocating or finding a way to, as you said, you're going to reinstall or install cameras and intercom system, you will have another area? Correct. So the, the plan is uh, we want, when the principal wants to talk to just the, their hall and not let everybody else in the building know what, you know, what, whatever needs to be addressed, that is, that is, that's going to, that's part of the plan. But right now the whole building is structured with an intercom system. And uh, some of those cameras as well, we're, but we're looking at installing some more cameras. You have different drop-off and pick-off pick-up areas. It's gonna for all be yeah, it's, uh, for for Hope. It would all be on the west side, drop-off and. It'll pick be up. its own like little school there. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a nice little facility. It's separate mm -hmm. from the rest of the building, from the where the other students are at the Academy Health Science and the STEM students. There's a huge foyer area in the middle. It's like a school within a school. It's right. a fine arts like, area. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And our kids deserve something nice. They really, really do. Uh, will they be able, are they going to use the regular cafeteria for lunch? Or what uh, are we, they going to do? We were, that was the plan, but we met with administration, uh, Mr. Quiroz and, and staff, and I believe they were kind enough to, excited enough to make Welcome, it today Mr. too. Quiroz. And support <laughs> their, I want to thank them too, because they've been communicating with all of us. And they are very, they're very aware and they have a very good buy-in, and they have a very good attitude about it. But so going where back are the to the kids going to eat? The kids are going to not eat in the cafeteria. He has a plan to where where the it's a it's a room, it's an art room actually, and it's a very large room, and there's plenty of room there. And they so they're going to have their own little cafeteria. Their own cafeteria yeah. as well. So that came from the campus recommendations. We've been communicating on all these little, trying to make sure it rolls out well. For our kids. So have you had an opportunity to hear from teachers also? Uh, not me personally. I will on the 19th, but I know Mr. Quiroz has been talking to several. In fact, we went this week with two teachers, and uh, I was there when one of the one teacher had just left, but they're all giving us a good thumbs up. Any, you, do you have any? You want to Time. I know the first time you all met, I, uh, I was out, but now I'm back. Uh, it, I've heard words such as beautiful, awesome upgrades. So every single teacher has gone over. We walked over, walked the campus. So in my opinion, it's a good move, a great move. It's good to hear. It's, uh, it's well-deserved. You mm -hmm. need, I mean, the Hope Academy, we've known that it needs a mm -hmm. lot of renovation. It's a very old building. I went to elementary school there. I don't need to say anything else. Oh, my God. Uh, so uh, so I'm, I'm happy for you all. And anything yes. we can do to, to make it really, really functionable and for the teachers to have a nice place, they deserve that also just as well as the students. So... We're it here is, to help you, Mr. Quiroz. Anything it is that, a school within a school. Yes. Uh, we yeah. have the ability to separate, be separate, yes. but together. So conjoined, but not mixed. Mm -hmm. And the upgrades to the entrances, because there is no real entrance, mm -hmm. that needs to happen for the parents and the students and the staff. But it should work out, and uh, it'll be the, the best year yet for us. And on the west side, do we have enough, do we have parking for parents? Is yes, there space? we discussed that. There is park, enough park, parking space there, but it does need to be, uh, let's say, beautified. It needs to be redone. And designated, within, like, you know, assigned, so parking sorry. for Hope Academy or whatever. Yeah. So the, the rebeautification is just cleaning out the parking lot itself because there's a lot of loose uh, rock mm -hmm. that we're going to take care of in-house. And the other one is painting, repainting the lines where the buses are going to go through and the parking lot. Okay. So that, that's going to, I didn't even include it because it's not going to take more than $50, $60 for for all those, for the cleaning and the painting. And our staff is gonna take care of that. 
So when do we have all of this happening? When are you guys? Mon we'll meet Monday. We will meet Monday if the board approves, and uh, we're going to talk to the staff about the plan that they already know. He's he's they're they're sold in on it. But Monday, and then the movement hopefully will be on uh, October on or before October the 13th on a Thursday. Good. So we're going to give ourselves some time. So our target date is October. Start Monday the 17th October. Back there. In your in your new That's in our your new home. Dates. And then our new baby our new home yes. Yes. Thank Very nice. Very good. Thank, Thank you, Mr. You. Gross. Thank you, Mr. Gross, to you Thank and your you. staff. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. We'll be yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So our, our second consolidation plan would be West Academy to the Carter Building. And uh, again, the car, can the Carter Building accommodate additional students? And the answer is yes. Carter Building student capacity is uh, 1,500 uh, currently. Carter current enrollment is 367. Uh, CCC current enrollment is 124. And uh, West, which would be moving into the Carter building, is at 307 as of yesterday. So total combined would be 798, which is well within the capacity for the building. Uh, West currently needs 20 rooms. Uh, Carter has enough rooms available to accommodate. Safety, of course, uh, how will we ensure safety? The process would be that the Carter Building is in compliance as well with uh, local state uh, safety guidelines. Main entrance is guarded. It's the same guardhouse for the Lincoln Building, which we just uh, talked about earlier. In fact, the guardhouse is right in front of the uh, Carter Building. Two officers will also be stationed here. One is already there. And the second officer will be coming in from the uh, West Building. Uh, the Carter Building does have also does also have security fences, gates, and cameras. And to enhance security, we will also relocate current staff tools at West Academy, which are cameras. Uh, I, there is no metal detector. I, I take that back on that. On uh, I double checked on that one earlier today. And of course, access control if available. So all those. Uh, safety tools will also be going to Carter. West Academy relocation timeline. We've been discussing uh, the task with our all our cabinet members, as well as the and the administration at West Academy. And upon board approval, this would be a little later time in our timeline. We meet with campus staff by October the third. Prepare the receiving building. Uh, supplies, computers, desks, etc., uh, and install any additional cameras in the uh, in the areas where West will be housed. And we are the only thing here that we are requesting request is that we move staff uh, toward the later part of the year because unlike Hope, these students uh, are are all well, they, they, all our students are are test test. But more than anything, we're right-sizing and ensuring best practices uh, to, to place and keep these uh, schools together because we're going to have CCC, La Jolla West, and our Jimmy Carter Early College in one building. And we need to make sure that they are not intermixing as much as possible, as least as possible, actually. We don't want that uh, going on. Uh, and of course, giving autonomy and dignity and respect to our students and staff as well. Um, so the plan would be to meet, if, if board approves, to meet with, with uh, La Jolla West staff and uh, CCC staff uh, on October the 3rd, or by October the 3rd. Uh, and of course, we will keep you posted on the move of this building as, as we progress. So we basically, we just need a little bit more planning time but we do want your approval to move the students. We just have not finalized the map yet for each of the three schools, taking into consideration the needs that each one has. Correct. Any other questions? As far as staff, just double checking, will the staff completely be moving, everybody? Yes. Well. And the last page, Rick, I don't know if you mentioned that there's no structural modifications needed. Correct. For both buildings, there will be no structural modifications. Correct. What area of the building would they be located? I might have missed, missed it. 
that's that's the, the the ongoing discussion that we need to continue to work with the principals and staff. Right now, we have not aligned the map to the to each location yet location. to each school. So we're still working on that, Dr. Samora. So what is happening now over where the performing arts area used to be? The, the little jam that became that is an area that we are high, we are looking at to possibly make some. Make some moves. Is that a big area there? I don't it, know. It there's really enough is. spaces. Is though. There's there's plenty of space the there. The Bound Hall area, oh, which that has that was many classrooms. The small there gym. Too. We're the also, small gym was then converted. Yes. To performing arts. Yes. yes. So it has different facilities. Correct. Plus yes. Size spaces there. That so space is under consideration also. We're looking at at right sizing the staff. That has access, seats. quick access to the parking lots and all that. Correct. Correct. Any other questions? Thank you. If not, thank you, Mr. Thank Vivian. you, Mr. Vivian. Next item is purchasing cooperatives fees report. Good evening, Dr. Steins. School Board of Trustees, Dr. Benavides, and our audience. Um, every year we're required by the Texas Education Code 44.0331 that we bring before our school board an information item that consists of the management fees that were paid by the district to purchasing cooperatives. And so on page 39, you have a list of the purchasing cooperatives that we participate in. And mostly all of them offer participation at no um, cost to the school district. However, there are some that require a management fee to be paid annually or depending on the type of purchase that is made. For example, you see that we paid $400 to the buy board. The buy board charges a $400 administrative fee or management fee whenever we purchase vehicles. And so during the reporting period, we purchased a vehicle. It was actually um, a central warehouse vehicle. And as a result of that purchase order, we paid $400 to the buy board. We're a member also of the Central Texas Purchasing Alliance, and we pay $150 to that cooperative. The state of Texas, through the Texas Controller's Office of Public Accounts, also makes um, statewide contracts, such as those offered by the Department of Information Resources, and the fee that we paid on an annual basis is $100. The most significant expense when it comes to a cooperative is the fee that the school district pays to the Region 1 Education Service Center for library services and media co-op. That one's based on ADA. And the amount that was paid for the 2021-2022 school year was $85,241.60. So the cumulative total that we paid was eighty five thousand eight hundred ninety one sixty. So this report is as required by um, the education code, and as our school board knows, these are purchasing cooperatives that are available to the district to satisfy purchasing compliance. So we use them as a supplemental method. Are there any questions? So with us moving into virtual learning and technology, what is it that we're now getting in terms of library services and media from the service center? I am not very sure on the specifics of that. Perhaps Mr. Munoz may be able to answer some of those, uh, that question. It's in regards to the services of the library purchasing cooperative, Mr. Munoz. Uh, yes, Dr. Samadu, we do have access to some uh, instructional resources through the region one. I think one of them is the Mac and Via uh, website. It's uh, 
like a home site that houses several programs that the kids that our students would then have access to and our teachers as well. Uh, one of them, I think, uh, is to, through the Mayan program. It's a, a online reading program. In addition to the, the meetings that they have with our uh, library staff and to coordinate. So we get some training online. That is, well, not necessarily training, but resources. Dr. Resources, okay. It's mainly student services, and it's different software uh, programs that kids can access through the library. Of course, in their own devices, but through the library from Region 1 through this cooperative. That is correct. Okay. Thank you. We'll move on to consent agenda. Did anyone want to pull anything out of consent agenda? We vote on this. If not, do I have a motion? Move. Motion has been made by Mr. Luna. Do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Second by Dr. Zamora. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And we'll move uh, to contracts number three. Approval of after-school driver's education for 2022-2023 school year for the comprehensive high schools, La Jolla High School, Palmview High School, and Juarez Lincoln High School. Do I have a motion? So moved. Motion has been made by Mr. Luna. Do I have a second? A second. Second by Dr. Zamora. Do we have any questions? If there are no questions, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Under business and finance, C, approval of Hope and West Academy relocation plan to the Lincoln Building and the Jimmy Carter Building, respectively. Do I have a motion? Motion has been made by Dr. Cantu. Do I have a second? A second. Second by uh, Ms. Hernandez. All those in, uh, are there any questions? If there are no questions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, under human resources, E, number one, Texas Teacher Evaluation Support System, TTES appraisers. So Motion has been made by Mr. Luna. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Cantu. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We will go uh, into executive session under govern Texas Government Code 551.074, 551.071, and 551.072 at 7.07 .07 p.m. We're back from executive session at 9.01. Personnel, item number one, employment of professional personnel. Do I have a motion? I, am, I make a motion to approve as uh, discussed in a in executive session. Okay, that's for number one. Do I have a second? Second. Second by uh, Mr. Luna. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Aye. For the record, I abstain. That's, no, you're not going to. No. No. That's professional. Oh, okay. okay. So then it's. Number two. Okay, bye. Item number two, employment of classified staff. Do I have a motion? I would like to make the motion. Um, has discussed in executive session. Motion has been made. Um, and a second by Mr. Luna. All those in favor say aye. Aye. I abstain. Okay. One abstention. Number three, staff resignations. Do I have a motion? I'll make the motion. To approve as a, an executive session. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Hernandez, do I have a second? Second. Second by Dr. Cantu. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Number four, number five. I don't think we have any. No action. No action. Four. 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 four and five, we don't need any action. Okay. Well, do I have a motion for no action to be taken? 
Samora. Will there no action be taken on four and five? Okay, so um, Dr. Samora and Ms. Hernandez. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion, yes. Mary, uh, yes. Ms. Hernandez and Mr. Luna. Uh, motion. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Meeting adjourned at 9.03.